Hey everyone, Colton Carnival here with FastGraphs. Advanced Portfolios is a portfolio system that premium subscribers have access to. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Advanced Portfolios, how to create an Advanced Portfolio, and what features we have for the Advanced Portfolios. So right now we're taking a look at my portfolios. And if you notice that we have four portfolios here with all the type called simple. And what we're going to do is hop into one of these portfolios, learn how to make it advanced, see what that advanced portfolio does, and then also create an advanced portfolio from scratch. So taking a look at this demo port, notice that I have 31 stocks in it, as well as a current valuation of $79,000. So if I come into this portfolio, this is the normal portfolio that everybody's used to looking at, the summary page, the holdings page, things like that. Also notice that some of these don't have weightings. And this is super important for advanced portfolios that we'll see in a minute to calculate things appropriately. And what I mean by that is notice that there is this Apple, for example, is in this portfolio. Well, it was bought for 10 shares and then sold for 10 shares. So now it has a holding of zero. And this is important, once again, because we need all of the historical transactions to calculate things appropriately. One thing I can do is click this button up here, show open positions only, and that will actually remove any of the closed positions just so you can view your portfolio easier. But once again, any sort of position that you have in the portfolio, Closed positions and open positions need to be included in the transactions tab. So temporarily, we're going to have this button here called make advanced. And I can click this button and it'll generate this and turn this into an advanced portfolio and we'll see what happens. But I want to let you know that you can also click it from here under the actions tab. So click actions, go to the portfolio section and click make advanced. In the future, this is going to be the only spot, but temporarily we wanted to just expose this so it's easy for our premium subscribers to adopt this initially. So clicking Make Advanced will refresh your screen and give you some new data. So notice that this says, please be advised that the data is currently being processed and calculated. And you can navigate to any section of our app while we finish this process. You can also stay here and it will automatically update when the data is in. So portfolio growth is updating, your XIRR is updating, and your income earned is currently updating and, and calculating. Just so you know, any change in transaction will cause this process to recalculate these three items. So while we wait for that, we can take a look at a few items. So these items up here are all the same to a simple portfolio, but we now have net investment, XIRR, which is currently calculating, income earned, which is currently calculating, the current dividend yield of the portfolio, the inception date, and then the performance date range. Okay, so notice that the portfolio growth chart just finished calculating, and we'll get to exactly what this shows in a minute. But going down to the next section, we have the top gainers, top losers, and top traded. So this is the day change for FedEx, the top losers in terms of day change, and then this is the volume for the last trading day with the volume change for the stocks in this portfolio. Notice that if I click this show open positions only, this doesn't just affect the holdings tab, but it also affects the stocks that are shown in every other section, like this top gainers section, right? So this OZCS shows up here, and if I click this, it is now gone. We saw a few other stocks change here as well. So notice the performance date range up here is November 16th, 2015 to March 25th, 2024. That is basically what this portfolio growth chart is based off of. But it's actually the weekly closing value, essentially, of your portfolio. Every Friday, this is updated. Sometimes Saturday, but it's every Friday of every week since the inception of your portfolio. And what we have are two different lines on here. We have the net investment line and the portfolio value line. You can scroll over this at any point in time and it'll show you the portfolio value versus the net investment. So whenever that portfolio value is over the net investment, you're experiencing a 
unrealized gain right currently right now we don't have realized and unrealized gains in the system but that's a, a feature that we're going to work on in, in the future but right now this is showing a gain during this section you know down here there was a loss there was some losses down here so it's just graphing the growth of your portfolio in this next section, we have the portfolio event feed. So this is showing the event feed for the stocks in your portfolio. Notice on the 21st, we had a 10Q for FedEx, UNFI had one on March 6th, and so on. And this event feed is only events that have happened. We don't have upcoming events yet, but that is something that we are also going to be getting in place. If we scroll down a little bit further, we have the asset allocation and sector diversification charts. So clicking on these changes, both of these chart up here, as well as this chart down here. This asset allocation, notice that this portfolio is made up of large cap, mid cap, small cap, and other stocks. So the weighting of the large cap is 88%. We can also see it here. So we have a pie chart breaking down what these values are. There's also a table that you can open up and look in here and then see the weightings of the individual holdings as well as the market value of the individual holdings under this. Sector diversification does the same thing, but with GIX sectors. Then in addition to that, we have a, another chart down here where this y-axis shows the dividend yield and then the x-axis shows the estimated growth rate. Now what this estimated growth rate represents is the estimated growth rate of the default metric or the smart metric for those individual companies. So we take a look at one of these stocks, Google, for example, we have the smart metric enabled on this and it defaults to adjusted operating earnings for Google. If I looked at a company like O, a REIT, it defaults to adjusted funds from operations. So that portfolio chart, the estimated growth rate is the Estimated growth rate of the adjusted operating earnings for certain companies, of the AFFO for certain companies, because we figured out that that is like the main metric to look at for those companies. Now, diving into what this chart is actually showing, we have an average line here for dividend yield of 2.44%, which matches the current dividend yield. And then we have an average growth rate estimated growth rate of 29.05%. And then what we do is we plot them on here. So notice that this right now, since we're on asset allocation for the mid cap, large cap, small cap type stuff, this is showing large cap being blue, the portfolio weighting, the estimated growth rate, and the dividend yield. We can come down here, see the dividend yield for Amazon is zero, estimated growth rate being at 32%, and portfolio weighting being at 6.52%. So this kind of just gives you a picture of where your dividend yield, your average dividend yield lies, as well as the average growth rate of your stocks in your portfolio, all weighting adjusted. Same thing for sector diversification. This doesn't change the location or size of these stocks. All it does is plots the bubble a different color. So once again, the y-axis is dividend yield, the x-axis is estimated growth rate, and the color of the stocks are either the sector or the asset type. And then one more value is the actual size of the circle, which represents the weighting. So notice this Southwest is 0.46% of this portfolio, while Meta is a lot bigger portfolio weighting. It shows up bigger as a bubble and is at 12.81%. Then down here, we have another weighting chart. Notice this just shows Meta being the highest weighting, and you can keep scrolling down all the way to the lowest weighting. Just to give you another visualization of what the weightings of your portfolio look like. Then other than that, everything else is relatively the same. You have the holdings, you have the ability to create views and whatnot. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is creating a portfolio. So this will be the normal method probably for most users in the future once you've already turned some of your current portfolios into advanced portfolios. In the future, you'll go through a creation process and we have updated this creation process. So as a premium user, you have unlimited simple portfolios and up to five advanced portfolios, which this will track right here. So if I wanted to create an advanced portfolio, all I would do is click on this 
hit next. From here, you can either choose to import a CSV file or just create manually, which means you'd have to put your individual transactions in, which you can do all of that now. You can select a CSV file now or at any point in time over the life of your portfolio, you can upload another CSV file. You can also add manual transactions at any point in time. This is just purely for the initial setup. So for this method, we're going to use import a CSV file. So if I click this, I hit continue. Here, I'm going to name this. This is a demo port. And then from here, I also choose the base currency. So what your portfolio valuation is going to be shown in. Notice that if you want to change this, maybe from USD to Euro or any other currency that we have available, you'll have to create a new portfolio in the future. This base currency is not editable once the portfolio is created. So I hit continue from here, and then this prompts me now to upload a CSV file, which I can just drag and drop. I dragged a CSV file here. It is uploading. I click finish, and then it will take you to this main page where we have seen this. So once again, it is recalculating all of the data at this point. One other thing to mention is you can't go from an advanced portfolio to a simple portfolio. So let's say I reached my limit of portfolios in here, which is shown by right here, this type advanced, advanced, and as well, we have a new icon for advanced portfolios. But let's say I have five portfolios already in here and I want to make a new one. I would have to delete one of these portfolios and then create a new advanced portfolio or make one of my simple portfolios advanced using the actions button. There is no going back from that. 